Hey, Ash. Hey, Jasmine. I was just wishing that I had a beverage. Can I steal yours? Part of it? <laughs> oh. I'm <Forgot> smiling. <laughs> I missed it. Would you like some water? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, cool. This episode is kind of long, so, you know, enjoy. We also want to issue a content warning for references to suicide and suicidal ideations around six minutes into the episode. This episode of Dear Jessamine has profanity, sex talk, weed smoking, and a bunch of other shit that is just not for everybody. You also may not agree with the stuff we say or how we say it, and we think that's great. Today we're recording from stolen Sisipaha, Chira, Okanichi, Kiawi, and Shikori lands. We promote cannabis medicine to people over 21, and if you're not 21, come back when you are. Hey, Jessamine. Hey, Ash. Um, where were we last week? We were someplace else last week. Where were we, like, physically? Yeah, physically. Oh, wow. We were Great recording question. someplace else. We were in New Oklahoma? Mexico? Oklahoma? I know. Um, we were on I-40. <laughs> yeah, we were somewhere on I-40. Shit. Where were we? Damn. I wish I could remember. I wish. I guess it doesn't matter. Oh, man. And, you know, it's a good time to know that Kylie is not with us right now because she would yeah. know. No, totally. Um, and part of it is because we're on the road and yeah. it means that it's much easier to do this offline and then upload it than to do it online when there's no internet. So totally. But I kind of miss you, Kylie. We do miss you, Kylie. Yeah. Every time you would know where we were last week. Hi, it's Kylie. I'm editing right now. And last week they were in a campsite red side of blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Last week they were in a camp. <laughs> Hi, it's Kylie. They were camping outside of Nashville last week. Um, but we were on the road last week, too. Mm -hmm. And we had a really cool Deary Query come in, but we didn't talk about it because we had other things to talk about. But I was just reflecting to Jessamine how excited I was that we're talking about it this week instead. Me too. Yeah. Um, not to get ahead of ourselves. No, totally. I thought that was like a great little like intro to the intro that we are going to do the Deary Query that we were going to do last week. Um, okay, cool. So... What are we inviting in? I'm inviting in joy and beauty. Mm. We are here in North Carolina, in Jamestown, North Carolina, and I'm so grateful to be here. Mm -hmm. I think that the weather, we got here just in time for like North Carolina's, one of North Carolina's pretty seasons. Mm -hmm. North Carolina has beautiful seasons, but beautiful spring and it feels good here. Yeah. The energy is good. It's not too hot, but it is hot. Nice and adjacent, hot. Adjacent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um it's just nice. Like, it's beautiful. The flowers are in bloom. You can smell the grass everywhere. It's also, nice. it's so funny to, like, drive. We were driving home last night, and it was in the evening, and there was, like, three or four people in the same, like, long block mowing their front yards. Oh, yeah, and totally. I was like, Literally. You know, you come home from work on a Wednesday, and Literally. time to mow the grass. I, I like that. It's, like, not on Monday, because yeah. Monday's Monday. Not really yeah. on Tuesday, because you're still, like, Tuesday's okay, like, get there. Fuck? And yeah. Wednesday, because it's not... Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Yeah. You're just like coming from work. You're like in your groove for the week and you're not going to waste your weekend on. I like that as a, yeah. as a like nine to five person's <laughs> routine. I don't know. I made I that up. I mean, for all we're of them, nine to five people. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. And like, I, you, you're good for doing a chore in the week. I just feel week. like if you do a little bit of everything, if you do a little bit all the time, you yeah. never have to do that much. Yeah. That's right. I'm coming around to that idea understanding the rituals of it coming back into the trailer that was like can what is it Fire. compulsory mm -hmm. compulsory cleaning i'm just like huh. you have to but it's really in my spirit <laughs> i do that anyway and mm -hmm. it's easier to get this all done in five minutes i love that it's such a small space that you can just like do it really fast and... from where you're sitting half the time <laughs> right and like it doesn't feel like a heavy lift but there's a huge release of it just makes you feel like really powerful like the other night i did the Great. I emptied the gray tank mm -hmm. and um, filled the fresh water tank. Oh, and wow. just the process of doing that was just like not very fulfilling. And like I did a bunch of other stuff, too. But that part in particular is yeah. like a little bit heavy duty and like just made me feel. And I'm finally like I'm getting the grip of taking yeah. the gray tank thing off. I just is, started doing that without a glove, too. Yeah, That's it's cool. it is challenging, but very well. I was using my father's hand strengthener thing. Oh, he wow. Uses. He use, he's done this my entire life, literally, okay. and we should get them. Yes, They're like grips right that you now. just do, literally. Like, he just does it all the time. It just makes your hands really strong. 
I think he probably started doing it when he was weightlifting. Um, Sounds right. Yeah. So I'm inviting in Joy. What are you inviting in? Mm. I was like, there's not really a word for it. It's like presence. Mm -hmm. I think I'm inviting in presence. Hell yeah. Were you amending yours? I was just saying more specifically beauty, not just joy. Okay, presence. Yeah. Well, I wanted to be present with what you added. So, oh, absolutely. <laughs> to be a little cheesy about it in a sweet way. Um, yeah, I just want to be here. You said something about like, I'm so good at just being here now. And I, in my heart, I said this morning, you said that. Mm -hmm. And in my heart, I was like, no, but I worry about the future all the time. Mm -hmm. And then you said the thing about Eckhart Tolle going into the mm -hmm. river to kill himself. And then he said, or I could not. Mm -hmm. And even though those happened out of order, I'm right now synthesizing them as in like, I worry about the future all the time or I could not. Mm. And I, all of that, thank you for the inspiration to call in presence. Mm. Um, yeah. I, I do just want to say, first of all, I feel like I call in presence like literally every fucking mm. week. So I identify with what you're Patience, saying. Patience, you say a lot. Patience. What is presence is oh no i'm sorry um i call in presence when we practice on house of phoenix with Catherine. she will or more on like yoga glow is where i think of this coming up but she'll be like set intention for yourself mm -hmm. and i will say like like my intention but i just say it silent silently to mm -hmm. myself but my intention is almost always to be present so i feel you like to just be here I think I haven't had like a relationship. This is going to sound weird maybe, but I don't think I've ever had a relationship to the word evoking this sensation or this mm -hmm. embodiment or something. Like getting there, maybe like presence, like, oh yeah, like being here now. I can say those words. I understand that. But it feels like this morning and today I've been like, I got up. Um, first thing I got up and <laughs> I wanted to masturbate mm -hmm. and I wanted to use a vibrator and it wasn't charged. And so like, oh I was God, like on the so. way. <laughs> And it just turned off and I was like, I wanted to be mad or I didn't want yeah. to be mad. Part of me wanted to be mad maybe, but I was like, whatever, just do the next thing. And then I wanted that in that moment, I decided that would be to walk around the track across the street, <sighs> yeah. the high school across the street and on the football field. Do you think they play football games in the field? Yeah. That's so important probably. Um, yeah. Cause I haven't seen it. I was just wondering if you've yeah, ever seen either. it. Have we just not been here in the right maybe. season or something? Yeah. So I was walking around the track while the sun came up and I was listening to a meditation from my teacher mm -hmm. and um, so much came up. Oh, hell yeah. And I should say in a, in a non-linear time way that last night and yesterday was like a dark night of the soul for me, for sure. Mm -hmm. A lot of depression, a lot of crying, a lot of like rock bottom feelings, a lot of fighting with you, a lot of receiving a lot of people's emotionality. I mean, just like, and just kind of feeling like I was buckling under the pressure of everything and it's cleansing. I think one of the most powerful things you said last night while we were trying to sort of debrief the day was um, you said that you heard me say that when we're on the trailer, it's the biggest house ever because, or this is the biggest space ever because um, our front yard is the whole world. Mm -hmm. While we were sort of like, oh man, he try I think trying to heal, but really coming from like maybe healing in the sense of like <laughs> tending to an open gash, mm -hmm. open wound laceration you know mm -hmm. of our relationship a little bit mm -hmm. but tending is tending you mm -hmm. know and we were out there sort of like trying to figure some stuff out and then you said that about the living room being the whole world and then you went in the house and I was like I just want to stay in the living room a little bit longer you know mm -hmm. and it felt like a really joyful mm, or like full of gratitude maybe I was yes. for the nature's offering of that space spaciousness because i think you and i needed it so badly yesterday Desperately. and i love the idea of needing space maybe because I, I the opposite of that is like being fearful being alone absolutely and so it was just a real beautiful experience of like post sunset being by myself out there and um Anyway, maybe I'm just thinking of beautiful images from my past 24 hours. Oh, but, my God. And I'm gratitude. living for it. Yeah. yeah. It's been a big emotional time for me, though, in the last chunk of my life, this last 12 hours. Yeah. No, literally. <laughs> but I have a lot of gratitude this morning for all the places it's taken me. And, yeah, so I got up. I did that. I walked the track. I came home. I journaled. I read. I made coffee. This is my dream. You asked me yesterday, what do I want? I want this morning. Totally. As much as I can. But it's helped me with presence. 
and it led me maybe even to think about presence and to hold that word and think about this feeling totally. in a new way. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks for listening to all that. It's beautiful. Thank you for saying it. You are. You are. I wanted to say um, something that you said about Eckhart Tolle earlier. I, I think that I may be combining two ideas yeah. and I just wanted to make space for that. I feel like he would be like, um, what Wait. the fuck? <laughs> um, I don't think he was going to kill himself in the water. I think that I'm combining oh. him and Robert Downey Jr. I think Robert Downey Jr. had a similar like come to Jesus thing oh. in the um, like he was going to kill himself in the ocean or some shit like that. Wow. And I did just also want to look up since now I know that um, Eckhart Tolle is a Aquarius, I wanted to know if Robert Downey Jr. is also an Aquarius. I love when we have these kinds of questions. Because I'm just very curious. Of the, like, connection. Of oh, Aries. Oh, you knew his ass was an Aries. I'm so sorry. Oh, Robert Downey Jr. is an Aries. I actually did think I knew that at some no, point. No, totally. He's, What's his like, birthday? April 4th. Excellent. I love that. He's, uh, oh, my God. Okay. Oh, yeah. Wow. Just making me think, too, how, like, we carry so much as, like, this, oh. like astrological leadership yeah. mandate it can get extreme it has gotten y'all have like a substance me. thing or a consumption thing that becomes an issue or can become an I issue i think it's that i think is escape from the pressure of the leader. exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. so i don't mean to talk over you i don't think you did i think of billy holiday with that mm -hmm. um sometimes it's just too much the pressure is just too much for us it was too much yeah. for me yesterday <laughs> literally <laughs> really want to talk about my day yesterday don't we yeah I mean, do you have more about it that you want to say? No, but I would love to talk about this new segment. Yeah, I'm so excited. We have a new segment. Did we do it last week? I think we did I it last maybe week. Maybe a little bit, yeah. Yeah, it's called A Few of Our Favorite Things. Mm -hmm. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, why not? These are a few of our favorite things. And in this segment, we're just going to talk about like a thing that we like that we saw this week and that we want to talk about today. That's it. Um, this thing that, my favorite thing this week is something that, or someone who I've enjoyed for before this week, but, and I was actually introduced to this person through our uh, co-collaborator, creator at We Go High. Mm -hmm. Just a reel that this person made, like, for completely different reasons. Like, she was showing it to show the equipment that this person was using in their video, but I started following this person, and now I'm just... <laughs> love her so oh, much yeah. she is hungry hungry he Jean on instagram and she lives in the bay actually and she just like goes around and eats different food that she hell yeah that she sees in the bay and she'll like make food at home i don't know what she does i feel like she must work in tech or something but like she literally will just like eat anything and i've learned so much about different foods because of her yeah. like different um uh korean foods i think in particular and like it's just very interesting to me yes. and i love um i love following her and i love the i just love everything about it it makes me hungry when i watch hungry hungry he Jean, i'm hungry and i wonder i wonder if her name is pronounced hey Jean and not he Jean. so i don't know but um i love hungry hungry he Jean. i think it's the best handle ever because hungry hungry hippos is everything that's correct so i never had hungry hungry hippos i don't know if you did or if that's uh well i was in foster care so there was like weird yeah. board games at different places that you'll never think of again and then somebody oh, totally. will say them like oh do you remember this really forgotten thing i'm like mousetrap like, rock em. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, literally. yeah i was there for that <laughs> did you play rock em, sock em robots that was another game um, that i was wanting to play was that i oh, don't know yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I think I, oh, it was on some movie that I, it was like the opening scene. Actually, it was this interesting opening scene, like zoom out scene of some 90s movie. Where interesting. Like, Ch -ch -ch -ch. Maybe it's big. Do you think it Probably. was? Yeah, I think they totally. played that on big. Anyway, I, I thought for a second that you were talking about sock and boppers. Oh my God. Sock and boppers. More fun than a, a pillow, pillow fight. Hey. Blow them up. Put your hand inside. Mm. You're ready to have the time of your life. Ooh. Sock and boppers. Anyway. Man, I thought you may have that was the golden age of jingles for real, man. Skip it, skip no, it, was, skip it, skip it. What's mm, 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 mm. What another one? Uh, uh, what is it? Um, skip it. No, we're gonna stick with skip it. Operation. No, okay. No. Crossfire. <laughs> Crossfire. You'll get caught up in it. 
<laughs> Were you there? I don't know. I just peed a little. <laughs> okay, <laughs> great, awesome. What's your favorite thing this week? Um, because I'm me. Mm-hmm. Um, I have two, but the first one is um, I've been seeing this like interesting. It, it's not quite a trend, like capital T trend, you mm-hmm. know. But I've been seeing a few folks post like alternative bri- alternative bridesmaid, or excuse me, alternative flower girl. Oh, videos. Oh, huh. um, and one person posted like, "Get the rich uncle to be your flower girl," and he's like passing out. He's Amazing. like, uh, like dollar, dollar bills. Dollar bills. Yeah. Hell yeah! And then this last one, that this one from today, was just too good. Was this? Um, if he's not, first of all, it's eleven eleven, so I'm gonna finish my thought oh, now. Yeah. But if he's not is. gay, he was really missing an opportunity. Oh, and <laughs> I should have put this meme up. <laughs> The meme that said, if you haven't had gay sex yet, grow up. (laughs) (laughs) So I have three, that one. Uh And then this guy was on roller skates and just Mm -hmm. doing a beautiful acrobatic, just like amazing roller skating while throwing flower petals out of a very tie-dyed like uh, fanny pack, bitch. Absolutely. Purple skates, maybe. Absolutely. And then the other one, last one, the first one that I put in was just some block letters that said love will trigger you Mm. because love is everything. Mm. We are love. You are love. God is love. You are God. God is change. Change will trigger you. Mm. Love, God, you will trigger me. (laughs) Mm. And I think that was a helpful thing to remember yesterday Mm. when we were fighting. Fighting is such a weird word for it for me because I feel like we are struggling. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Struggle as in like what we do for freedom, you know? I feel like we struggle. I don't mean to, to. Please. I feel like we struggle to hold on to things that we need to let go of. Like there are things oh, that. Oh, yeah. I was reading our pattern oh, yeah. this morning um, and it was saying that like we point out the things that we don't need to carry anymore sure. the, in each other. Yeah. And like. It's so interesting the ways that that happens all the time. Like, I always feel like you're requiring that I let things go. And it's like, I want it to be a pleasant, like, I'm requiring that you let this go. And it's like, no, I'm learning this through opposition to you. Mm. Like, I'm learning this through, like, having to stand up for myself or to believe in myself, to Mm. think, to to see myself as your equal, to not play the victim, to not cast myself as the victim. No, I'm nobody's victim, you know, like, and really to just stand in that. Mm. So like, it's Mm. very, it's like, it could only happen with somebody that, somebody like you, (laughs) it would only happen with you. I mean, back, I mean, ditto back at you. Like just the power and strength of you, the sturdiness of you, the fact that you will not break under the pressure of my resistance to your Mm. Um, what did you say? Requirement? Like mm. your mandate? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Requirement. When you said it, I was like, damn, it kind of is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I mean, I think this is one version of not settling is that you and I do make each other better. Mm-hmm. You said one of our, one of the things that we processed last night was, I guess the things that I processed, you said, I don't know how much you processed it, but um, before or after, but that we don't make each other better. We're not making each mm. other better. Mm-hmm. And on the note of being present and living in the moment, I feel like in that moment we weren't. Yeah. Slash were. Literally. <laughs> no, we we're like. But breaking. in that moment it was feeling or maybe experiencing or like speaking to the ways we don't mm-hmm. in that moment. Because they were very present. The ways we don't make each other better were very present yesterday. I think for both totally. of us. I'll speak for myself, but it's, you said it. So I feel like. Absolutely. If that's true for you. Yeah. And so. But I think that we do. I think we can. And I think anything and everything starts with ourselves. Mm-hmm. Like am I choosing to make myself whatever better means today? More mm-hmm. present, more alive, ex- mm-hmm. awake to the aliveness of everything, the oneness of us all, you know, whatever the metric is, because I don't, better is so vague, but, um, but yeah, I think we do that. I think we awaken each other to a, the aliveness in the, in the universe, mm-hmm. you know, and <clears throat> only somebody like you, mm-hmm. too, you know. Um, you want to do this, dear queer? Yeah. Um, this was a dairy query that came in through my Instagram DMs and I got it and I was so excited to receive it and I am excited to answer it here on the show and I really appreciate the, I don't know who sent it I can't remember but um, I really just I'm so grateful that you sent in this question and it, mean, it means a lot to me um, so this DM came as a 
question in response to a picture that I posted on my Instagram at my name is Jessamine of me and my other partner. And this picture was taken like a long time ago. It was when we like the first couple years that we lived in our first apartment mm-hmm. together in Durham. And I was feeling nostalgic <laughs> and this person asked this question about that picture. Dear Jessamine, I've been following forever and I just keep wondering if y'all are missing one another now that you're in a new life season. It's like, I've just been so curious because you were like a daily part of one another's lives. Just been thinking how hard it would be to have so much love for someone, but enter a new season. Sending heart, heart, heart. I love that you read that as sending heart, 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 because I read it as sending love. Sending so love, love, love. No, sending heart. Whatever. Um, yeah, thanks for asking about this, because this has been a huge part of my daily existence for the last year. And I've not had anyone to talk to about it, but you, Ash, and my other partner. Mm-hmm. I can't think of anyone else that I really have like talked to about this, because it's not something that I think is easy to understand mm-hmm. or even like to get why we're doing it or like like I've tried to talk to other people who know me and my other partner who have known us to be in partnership for a long time and they don't get it because Mm -hmm. they're like so y'all are broken up or you like your relationship has changed completely especially because my other partner has another partner that they live in close proximity to and spend a lot of time with in Durham so that people who are monogamous or who come from monogamy mindset Mm -hmm. see that and they're like okay so at a minimum at at the most y'all are like friends Mm -hmm. and I'm like no that's my husband Mm -hmm. (laughs) I don't know that it's maybe it's not clear but like we would have been married if we were interested in that type of Mm -hmm. relationship but instead we just lived together for a long time and now we're at a place in our lives where we don't need to live together Mm -hmm. in that same way and the decision to not live together was based on a lot of different factors it was not one thing and it also didn't happen all of a sudden Mm -hmm. this had been a long time coming and For me, so that the decision to not live together was a decision to specifically not live together, not to not be together Mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. And even I did not know what that would mean or like, and it made me very fearful so that like, okay, we moved out of the old house at the very, the last day of June, 2021. My other partner and I had this conversation in March of 2021. Mm -hmm. So there was like a good amount of time in between those two things. And that whole first chunk, I was just a hundred percent devastation. Like just, this is the worst thing that could ever happen. This is my nightmare. Mm -hmm. I never saw myself not living with them. Mm -hmm. Like I just assumed that we would be living together forever. And like, and I mean, what does forever even mean? (laughs) I did think that it was possible that we, that something like this could happen. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want for it to happen. And so I didn't focus a lot of energy on it. And I didn't understand how it would work. Yeah. And I assumed that if we were not living together, that would mean that we were not together in the same way. Yeah. And I also feel like it's important for me to say that Earlier in our relationship, so we, when, when my other partner and I started dating, we were poly from the jump off, like we, cause yeah. we were both cheating, <laughs> we got together. So we knew that the other person needed that mm-hmm. and we were exploring it together. But I have found that the first phase of every relationship that I've been in, mm-hmm. it follows a monogamy mindset a little it's like it's infatuation yeah you're just like oh my god this is the most incredible human being that you that i've ever met and like we just have to spend all of our time together it's like intentional self inundation literally <laughs> it's just like just yeah. and so that period lasts for however long it lasts it might last for a night it might last for a couple years mm-hmm. or a few years for me it usually lasts for like three years mm-hmm. and then at that point there's a shift 
I think of the relationships as having like three year turnover cycles of like mm -hmm. things that happen. I would be so curious if you are married, if you have been in a long partnership of even if you've been in a partnership of like five years, maybe three to five years. Mm -hmm. I'd be so curious what your thoughts are about this, um, especially if you have children, if that impacts it as well. But it's like there's cycles to it. Yeah. So. At the end of that first like three year cycle, me and my other partner, we had a three year period of like, I don't know if we can keep living together. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this. Like, because we that was when we started to actually explore polyamory and like what it would mean to have whole other relationships mm -hmm. while still being in partnership together. And during that period, I I definitely thought about what it would be like for us to not live together. But then we came out of that period mm. and we're like, then we were in a whole other period for three years about, and literally we made this change and shift into this next period at that like nine, 10 year mm. mark. So that's why I'm doing this three year totally. thing. But because of that transition out of the feeling of like, I don't know if I can do it with this person anymore. Mm. That was why I was like, well, maybe we're good then. Like maybe, maybe we don't need to worry about this. Mm -hmm. But, um, the reality is that in that like six year period of change, our relationship changed a lot. Yeah. And we really were not communicating in the same way at all. We're like we used to talk so much, mm -hmm. so much, very much like how you and I talk now. Mm -hmm. We used to talk like about everything all the time. And then we're both very focused on our work. Not unlike how you and I are very focused on mm -hmm. our work. But we're both really focused on what we're doing and they work, we work completely different schedules. So like they work at night primarily and I work during the day. And then I also travel constantly. And for that period of time, I was traveling like most of every month. And so we just were not talking at all. When we talk, we're just catching up. It's just like, what's been going on? How you been doing? What's, what you know, and like you can never actually like, connect and then on top of that we've known each other since we were in college mm -hmm. like we met when they were 19 and i was 20. and so the way that we communicate in partnership then mm -hmm. was the mold for how we were continuing to communicate even though we'd been in other relationships mm -hmm. with people that required us to deepen our communication and our intimacy we weren't doing that with each other. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> toward the end of us living at the old house, mm -hmm. we were just not communicating. We were not speaking to each other head on. And it was devastating for me. And it was intensified by you moving into the house mm -hmm. and the pandemic and all of this shit. Mm -hmm. But that piece of it had just been there before you moved in, mm -hmm. you know, like it was something that we had not addressed and that frankly, I would have continued to not address because mm -hmm. I do that. Mm -hmm. But I was so inspired by them saying that they needed to live alone. Mm -hmm. Like it was for them to own that and to know their power and to know that they needed to, be fully responsible for themselves and have autonomy like that. It was just like, I'm still inspired by it, yeah. obviously. But we weren't communicating. So I was like, if I'm going to go on the road with you in a camper trailer, are we going to be communicating? Mm -hmm. And I feel like almost immediately I started Marco Poloing them. I don't remember how it happened. But one time we were texting and neither of us are like that great at texting or mm -hmm. like really care about it like that. But I was like, I wanted to say a lot to them, but it was so much, it was way too much to be mm -hmm. texting. And I was like, do you want to, have you heard of Marco Polo? Like we could do that. And they were like, I've heard of it, but not used it. Marco Polo is the savior of our relationship mm -hmm. for real. It is Marco Polo. If you've never used it is like a um, video messaging. App. It's a video messaging app where it's like you're FaceTiming, but you can watch the FaceTimes whenever you want to. And the key of it that has been so crucial for me and my other partner is that you cannot interrupt the other person when they're talking. So you have to listen to everything that they're saying. 
And we directly communicate with each other in a way that we never have. Mm -hmm. And it feels so good. It just feels so good. I don't even know how else to say it. And it facilitates knowing how to do that in other contexts. Yeah. So the reason that I was excited to answer this question today and not last week mm -hmm. is that I knew that this week I would have seen them by the, seen them in real life mm -hmm. by the time we actually did this recording. Yeah. And it's been I haven't seen them since December or mm -hmm. whenever we were here in North Carolina most recently. December, yeah, yeah. So I think it would have been November though that I actually saw them because we like we were only here for like a couple days That's in December. Right. And here to the end of April. Literally. Or maybe I saw them. It doesn't matter. The mm -hmm. point is I haven't seen months. them since winter. Mm -hmm. And um they they and I talked about some hard stuff yesterday that I felt very open to receiving from them only because of the open reception that has been required of me in other parts of my life, mm. separate from them, yeah. facilitated by the absence. Like the absence, us not being around each other is crucial right now. Like mm. that is how we're able to even learn about ourselves enough to be in the partnership that we need to be in. And I look at our partnership too, and especially like thinking about how it started and like how young we were mm -hmm. and like, it's just amazing to me to like still be unpeeling this person, like to like to learn so much about them. I am more in love with them now than I have ever been. I'm more sexually attracted to them than I have ever been. And it's really cool to be like very mature in it mm -hmm. and to see that and to see that like we don't have the same needs that we once did we yeah. don't have the same insecurities and so we can just be like really straightforward with each other in a way and we also can give each other the space that is needed like they give me the space that i need mm -hmm. I don't need more than what they give me. Mm -hmm. And they, I hope that they don't need more than I give them. I'm sure that has been a recurring issue though over the years is that they need more from me or I feel like they need mm -hmm. more from me than I'm able to give. And this is also why I'm so grateful for our, to be polyamorous and to have other partners yeah. because, and it makes me respect my metamor more because mm -hmm. I'm like, Thank you. Thank you for caring for them. Thank you for loving them the way that they need to be loved. They need to be loved up close. Mm -hmm. You know, they need to feel that I need to be loved up close. They and like we can't. She can offer them that, mm -hmm. you know, in a way that I literally cannot because I have to do some other shit. Mm. So. I would say that this season, I think, is our best season and it's it's happening right now. So, well, one of one of our best seasons i remember when we first got together i was that was blissful it was mm -hmm. everything it was amazing i have i have many fond memories from that time and i hope that i will have fond memories from this time too mm -hmm. that's how it is but this was also interesting because we were um thinking that it could be an interesting time to compare how because like talking about distance and like being away from someone mm -hmm. and like what that offers, because I do think that it has offered me a lot just to not be in the same space as this person, especially like getting out of living in the same house. Mm -hmm. At a minimum, like I was taking them for granted, I was taking that presence for granted. Me but too. also like I couldn't think about them objectively at all yeah. or anything sort of objectively because we're right up underneath each other. Mm. Well, first you said you needed to step back to see them. Reminded me of this Ani DeFranco line where she says, take a few steps back, put on a wider lens, and it changes your skin and your sex and what you were wearing. Literally. And she <clears throat> was talking about a specific experience of being in a black church and being like a white person and recognizing mm. like uh, that reversal of like being the only person of like you in the space and then like standing back and being like, we are all the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but also there is a real thing about being different. And then in another way, on another plane, we're all the same. And I just, I love the image of like stepping back and putting on a wider lens and the things that you see when you're able to do that, the things that you see that you missed because you were having a narrow, more narrow lens or something. 
so that, that came up. I was also thinking about um, you were grateful for your metamor, um, having the ability to like offer things that you're not physically here to offer and otherwise. And I was remembering last night um, asking you if you had spoken to them about like what's going on with us. Mm. And you were like, why? Did, why? Mm. And I was like, because you deserve wise counsel. And you love and trust that person so much. And I would hope that if they could offer you anything, regardless of how it would impact me, that it would be something that you can receive that, that they, you know, that they offer and you receive. And I was very heartened to hear that y'all were able to have some supportive conversations for you. And I was feeling really grateful for them that they were there for that and that y'all were able to connect in general, but especially about stuff that seems really confounding for you you know and um I just think they're so wise thinking about yeah. talking about your <laughs> totally. other partner um on the note of taking them for granted yeah I mean like and reflecting on how I was in the space mm -hmm. with them when the three of us lived in the house together mm -hmm. just grateful for the lessons but also like we all we invited a bunch of our friends to the to our favorite bar mm -hmm. in Durham the other night and they were there and I was sitting next to them and just listening to them tell stories and being grateful also for them and their presence and the way that they make me feel in my body is just so calm mm. and like getting to share energy with them and just be near them is always such a blessing I remember when we lived together like few times you would be out of the house or traveling or something and I'd be like in the kitchen making something and I'd hear their door open and then they'd like maybe be going to the bathroom but maybe be coming into the kitchen to get water <laughs> and I'd be like okay act cool <laughs> I'd be like be cool be cool but just like invite them to smoke weed with you <laughs> speaking of would you spark that weed oh my god absolutely and, please um, continue I just I remember that as such a it was just a fond memory of like oh <laughs> you know, and then maybe the next time would be like, hey, you going to smoke some weed? Sure, later. See you. <laughs> you know? Yes. I feel like they were teaching me, like, bro culture, like, mm. how to be easy, how to just, like, just take it down a notch. They would actually give me that uh, feedback sometimes. I found out yesterday that their Mars is in Pisces, which explains so much of them to me. And wow. um, literally, dude, literally. Ooh. Your Mars is in Aries. Think about that shit. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> no, but just think about, like, because y'all are so similar to me. Like, so similar. And I always, it's hard because, like, queers, Mask of Center queers, I feel like sometimes it can be hard for y'all to be friends with each other. Like, Mask of Center. Well, we're emulating masculinity, and there's a whole no homo yeah quality that's like so ironic and so ironic and boring literally but like when y'all would spend time together that would just be like oh for like you that's yes yeah. oh my god because it's like it's the friendship that should have been like y'all should have been sandbox friends you know totally. like red rats friends a hundred percent and um so that but um also reminded me of this time that me you them and my high school girlfriend mm. all had dinner together at our house, at the right. old house. That's one of my favorite. I have a lot of great memories from the old house, but that was one of my favorite things that happened like right toward the end. Mm -hmm. I think after this decision had even been made to mm -hmm. not all live together. Um, God, that was such a quiet affair. I remember being like candlelit and just very low, totally. light jazz playing and like Literally. unbelievable food. and Fucking like, lasagna from Costco, though. You know, like funny. salad. Tres Leches cake from Costco. Amazing. Yes. But then like just low, like easy, just just low vibrations. Yeah. I just remember being like, because I was just being an observer. I felt like when, you know, when you're like at a new school or like new at a thing, new at a job, mm -hmm. kind of quiet observation is like really natural in the beginning. Shyness, call it whatever. But it's like, I was feeling like, okay, that bitch started dating Jessamine mm -hmm. when y'all were 15 literally or six that motherfucker started dating Justin when y'all were like 20 literally i met like, you in my mid 20s our mid 20s your later 20s my mid 20s yeah. i was just like you know giving it over with everybody no but it's a it's like your collection you like collect and move on and collect and move on and collect and move on i'm a collector it's a thing 
I also feel like that table. Well, okay. I just want to be really specific that me and my other partner started dating when we started dating when I was like 24 or 23 okay. or something like that. But you were still dating they, the first one. Yeah. She and I started dating. We, I knew my other partner from when I was 20. They, my, uh, or 19. 19. Wow. Um, Your high school. I have known my high school girlfriend since she was 15 and I was 16. And we dated until I was, we dated off and on um, until I was 24. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and then you, I met you when I was like 26 or 27. I was at your 27th like birthday party. <gasps> That's right. You were at my 27th birthday party two years later. Wow. And you just turned 33. And you just and turned. I will be, you'll 35 be 35 this year. That's crazy. Do you remember when we were younger and couldn't fathom what 33, 35? Could I had no concept of that. Be? I literally never thought about being 33 or 35. Which gives me hope for the future. I never thought about those ages either. I think about 40 sometimes. Because I think about 40 seems to be a shit show year. Well, yeah, it's been really interesting to be here, actually, in your parents' driveway, in our trailer, um, and thinking about my girlfriend because she and I really got really close while you and I were parked here last year. And um, totally, it's when I was sitting at this table and I told you that I was going to go visit her for the first time the next day. It's been hard to feel far away from her just because I do believe in that balance, like you're talking about with me and um. And even your high school girlfriend, how mm. she offers you companionship and like mm. unknowing, yeah. you know, and how, ooh, I want to talk about how I've been so jealous of her too oh, interesting. for years, you know this, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just like making a big deal about like y'all sending each other playlists mm -hmm. and bullshit like that. Uh, definitely a place to appreciate your grace mm. in receiving my tantrums around that stuff. And I do want to contextualize that a tantrum is kind of also a flashback or yeah. a, like traumatized trauma trauma response, you know. So I I don't My therapist told me like I was she, I expressed something and she said, "It sounds like you're having a tantrum." And I say that because I have tantrums mm -hmm. and I'm like that feels applicable here. Anyway, um so yeah, your so your high school girlfriend, is, you know, I think they we all offer each other so much. That's why we're in each other's lives. Mm -hmm. And I know that she offers me so much. Um, but it's interesting just like how relationships work in general. And the fact that like we're not all together, like you don't start a relationship to find your other half. Mm -hmm. Like we're all walking each other home. Mm -hmm. So like really you're just walking close to another person yeah. and like getting to see them up close, really up close. And it's not even about them doing anything for you. It's just about you seeing them like, mm. fully and accepting them. And so the challenge is to accept them mm. no matter what. And that part is really hard. And sometimes like you just can't, I right. think, or like I can't. Or, you you know, if you're if you're a four agreements fan, it's just an agreement that you can't. And that's OK, because that's the agreement for now. And then you just got to keep it moving, keep learning. Maybe the agreement shifts. But like I we'll see. I end up in relationships. I've been broken up with a lot. I've broken mm. up with very few people. No, it's real. It's true. Um, I've broken up with very few people, though the times that I have has been notable to me. To but it's because me. I always think we can work it out. Like, I'm like, no, like, we, we can, can figure it out. it out. Yeah. I'm we like, no, it it's okay. But the other person is like, no, we can't. And then as soon as it's over, I'm like, Ooh, you were right. That's we're good. No, but it's like, and like you're better now. Like, and I don't have any exes that I don't have. I'm in love with all my exes. I think they're all just like top notch, incredible people. But we don't need to do that again. Like we already did it. You're good. I'm good. You be blessed. But like we could kick it, you know. Totally. Yeah. Flirt. Forever. We could fuck, but like we don't need to be together. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, is it time for the new segment? Yeah. Oh. Wait, what is that? We have the trivia segment. Ah! Yeah, totally. No, okay. So, y'all, we have a new segment this week. This has I'm been... So oh, my God. Okay. I'm not going to give all the backstory. All I'm going to say is that we have a new segment, and it's called Trivia. And each week, we are going to drop y'all with a trivia question. And if you know the answer to the question, hit put us, it on social. Drop on it social. on social. This is going to air, like, 
after like a few weeks after we recorded it mm -hmm. so it'll be a while in context for us yeah no. so like we're not gonna shout you out on the show probably yeah. yet we'll figure Whatever. that part we'll out later that. but on the next episode we're gonna say the answer to this question oh, yeah. so you'll have that but um I'm yeah so oh and i did also just want to say that if you want to send us a deary query go to our website dearjustman.com and you can send one on the form submit mm -hmm. a question on the form there that's right um Actually, no, before I say the trivia question, I just want to say that this is a Harriet the Spy reference. We talk about Harriet the Spy. We are, Harriet the Spy is a very important formative film for both, both of us. us like, it was definitely one of my babysitters. Let me I say, feel like it was, my mom read it when she was a kid. Oh, absolutely. And so that's of part course, of why it was my mom probably did too. in my little brain. But she, we got, we had the Nickelodeon orange. So y'all like, you were a Harriet the Spy book person. No, 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 no. She passed it down, but as in the movie form with uh, oh, totally Rosie yeah. O'Donnell and I forget that Rosie O'Donnell's in that movie. What's the main? What's Harry? The actor Harry? Michelle Track. I'm so sorry. My I'm sorry. Baby I apologize. Fan. I no, baby, it's fine. You don't have Just a thing for redheads the, the way that I do. Good. Michelle Trachtenberg True. is the, the doll. <laughs> Michelle Trachtenberg. I follow her on Instagram. The question is, what is the name of the actor who played Janie Gibbs in the Nickelodeon film? Harriet the Spy. Obviously, you can Google it, but if you know, don't Google it, y'all. Every like anybody can rules. Google, dude. Yeah, this is trivia rules. I mean, do what you got to do, but know what cheating is. That's you right. Know what I mean, you cheated, and it's whatever, but you cheated. If you don't know this, that's totally cool because it's the moment you know, that the people who know it to shine, like, and your moment to shine will be in a different trivia question. Maybe next week. So come on back. I'm not gonna lie. I don't even know the answer to this question. That's I right. cannot remember this actor's name. Oh, I don't want to say anything more. Okay. Trivia, we'll have the answer for you next week. I'm really excited. Are you, you excited? I'm so excited. Deeply. Um, can we also do an Astro of Thought of the sure. Week just like real quick? Sure, sure, sure. Um, this is an eclipse week. It's a solar eclipse in Taurus. It's the first or second of four, apparently, that are going to mm -hmm. happen this year, three or four. Um, I was talking shit about Taurus last week, I think. And if I wasn't, I was thinking it. Mm. But this week, I'm feeling really grateful for Taurus and mm -hmm. their uh, appreciation of the good life and of the things that are just like really beautiful and important and like knowing what the good things are. Mm -hmm. And there's mm -hmm. also a lot of really interesting astrology that I've forgotten completely, like what the details of it were, but of it was. But I'm grateful for Channing Nicholas for telling us about it. And I also want to shout out my favorite Taurus my best friend one of my best friends i love her very 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 much and i got to spend time with her this week in tour season and that felt on brand and on time oh, yeah. on target um my astro, my astro thought of the week is that i was having a conversation with my good friend who was my uh college roommate and mm. I, just, I called her the other morning really on a whim i was just like that person her name mm. came to mind and i called her and it was funny. We were watching um, Only Murders in the Building, mm -hmm. and the um, last night you and me and the uh, main characters were like talking. They were they're old. It's Steve Martin and Martin Short. You know they're in their probably 70s, 60s, 70s. They're definitely Must in their be, 70s. Literally 70s. They're amazing. Literally, I love that. I love that show. But they said they were like trying to decide if they were going to call or text Selena Gomez. Oh my god, yeah. And um, um, one of them said, <coughs> one of them said. Calls seem to bother them. <laughs> no, he said, he said, the Steve Martin said, should I call or text? Martin Short said, calls seem to bother them. That's right. That's, <laughs> That's right. I was like, they sure do bother us. But, you know, my friend from college uh, is older than me. And so I said, call mm. her. So I called mm. her and it was perfect timing for her. And it was perfect moment for me. And she was talking about this really incredible and, and powerful proceed, like a uh, ceremony she was fixing to do. Mm. And um, we chatted a bunch about, you know, it's funny that I don't remember Astro Thought of the Week. Um, <laughs> we chatted about how um, sort of Western astrology versus Eastern, not versus, but sort of like next to <laughs> Eastern astrology, um, that a big difference is like the personality traits that the um, signs sort of inspire you to, or yeah, maybe that's how you'll say it. And that in Vedic uh, astrology it's much more about like the karmic links between things mm. okay. not that those are like different 
uh, conceptual or not that those are different uh, in real life, but mm -hmm. the way we talk about them mm -hmm. sounds really different. Mm -hmm. And then I was thinking about that sh Indian matchmaker show that we watched and thinking about like Vedic astrology being like you're karmically linked to this person, which mm -hmm. is just not how we talk about it totally. over here. Literally. You know? It's not Absolutely. different. It's just not how we talk about it. We talk about it like, you know, your other partners, Mars is in. Yeah. You know, we're constantly comparing like our stars to each other's and mm -hmm. like how that all maps together and stuff. Mm -hmm. But we just don't talk about it that way. It's not the totally. only use of it here. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Not that it's the only use of it anywhere, but the idea of the relationships between people and the relationships between stars and like that we just say it really differently. Anyway, it was a great conversation. I love speaking about it. I That's love and that I, so And much. I could be butchering, bastardizing literally everything coming out of my mouth, but it is what we talked about. <laughs> so in that way, it's true. <laughs> Totally. Because I haven't studied either of these things very much. Okay. I can't. So I Please. also haven't studied these things very much, but I also had another interesting question, conversation about astrology mm -hmm. this week with some other people. With my metamor, my other partner's, mm -hmm. what one of my metam fuck, one of my metamors, my other yeah. partner's partner, and I were talking with our good friend. Who introduced us? Yeah. Our mm -hmm. friend who introduced us. Should we say their name? No. Nope. Yeah. They're not in the credits. Me and that's that is a great rule. Yeah. Okay. Me, my other partner's partner, and our good friend were talking about astrology. Well, there were other people there, but I feel like the three of us were like once we were talking about oh. this. They were talking about, I have forgotten the name. This is the part where I'm like, I really don't know that much about astrology. Mm -hmm. But they were talking about this other system of astrology, different from how we typically chart our astrology here. Mm -hmm. How they both had done their charts on that system and it had changed their charts dramatically mm -hmm. and like given them both like really different placements. And actually not that different. It's literally just just if you were dating things differently, mm -hmm. like it would, it's not that different. And also everybody has everything in their charts. Yeah. So like we're all everything all the time. We're the world. But each of them had like these different issues with their new chart. Mm -hmm. And it was just very interesting to me because I could see their new charts in them, even though they're both so those other charts. But mm -hmm. that's percept that one of the things that we were talking about is how much perception impacts all of this. Yeah. That like and it's not just our perceptions of ourselves, but it's perception of the world that we live in. So that um the example that my uh, other partner's partner was giving was that she is a Scorpio. And she is such a Scorpio in my mind, deep Scorpio. Same. And she said that she is always identified with like, um, like All Hallows Eve, like Halloween themes. Like she's always been like Daria is the picture that she uses as like her meme, her meme of herself mm -hmm. because she's totally like very she's Scorpio. You know what I mean? But la, 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 her la. new chart charts her as a Libra, like mm. a triple Libra, Whoa. right? And but she's saying that and I hope this isn't too wow. much information, but. She's saying that, like, because of her identifying with, like, the seasonal aspects of Scorpio, that it may be, like thinking more expansively that that is also Libra but she doesn't mm -hmm. think of it that way because we don't think of it th this way in this particular hemisphere at this time yeah. in history so it becomes astrology becomes about more than just uh, the stars it's about the zeitgeist as mm -hmm. well and it's just like really interesting and Chani is always pointing that out too zodiac zeitgeist totally it's interesting okay Spin off. go on um, it's 11.59. I think we should get the fuck out of here. Precisely. But we... Let's read the review. Yeah. Y'all, every time that you leave us reviews, it means so much. I cannot even tell you. And I don't like to read reviews because, honestly, it fucks with my head. But I, I'm just so grateful that you leave them. And we wanted to read one here. Can I read it? Because I don't Absolutely. usually read reviews, literally. Um, the review says... Lord, let me get it big enough. Okay, this is from DMB Girl 27 I hope that's you. Oh, I should oh, no, no, that. you should. You should. You should. You should DMB you should. Girl 27 I really hope this is a Dave Matthews Band reference. I was just talking about them last night. Love y'all so much. I found this podcast because I found Jasmine via yoga things years ago. I did not think I'd find this podcast relatable. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I was so wrong. 
<laughs> I've oh, yeah. learned I've learned so much and thought about so many things from a different perspective because of this show. I also find Jessman and Ash to have super soothing voices, especially mm-hmm. Ash. Hell yeah, your voice is so soothing. Your voice is so calming, literally. This person knows. I hope you keep doing the podcast as long as it feels right for both of you. I love it. Thank you so much for sending that in. You can Damn. leave a review on Apple Podcasts. You can also follow us on Spotify and I guess you get shit wherever you get it. But Please leave us a review. It helps a lot. <laughs> All right. Let's get the fuck out of here. See you. Bye. Dear Jessamine is produced by Tenderfire Media. For more on our show, follow us on Spotify and Instagram at Dear Jessamine, or head over to our website, dearjessamine.com. If you're an Apple podcast person, you can subscribe to our show. And while you're there, write us a review. They really help us out a lot. And they give you a place to let folks know how you feel about our show. Here's our team. Kylie C. Roberts is our editor slash producer. Angel Foster and Naya Williams do our social media. Jamie Lepper draws our art and Fruit Snack plays our theme song. Montez Mickles is our director of production. Anna Rooney is my chief of staff. Amber Richardson is Ash's chief of staff. Ash Danger Phoenix is my co-host and co-producer. And I am Jessamine Stanley. And we believe that no one should be in jail for weed. Tender fire. Drop page.